pointing. Hey, Keith, are you at the beach? Oh, well, this is as close as I can get to the beach, but I am outside in the sun. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame. It's time for Love Your Bones. That's right. That's right. And I am at the beach, but it's raining. Raining, raining, raining. Thunderstorm, but we need it bad, so. Yeah. But, but I mean, what are we talking about today? What are we going to talk about today? You know what was interesting is, is this concept of vitamin D. Vitamin D. You know, I started taking vitamin D because you told me to during COVID. I never took it before until you, like you, like you, you made me take it. And now, you know, I take it. I don't take any vitamins, but I did it because of you. So how long ago did you start taking vitamin D? Um, during COVID, when you told me to. Did you talk about that? Well, well, we know when COVID started, we shut down America. I know. But uh, do you, at whatever, time, at whatever point you told me to take vitamin D. And it was really when people were dying every day. Yes. I think when we got up to like whatever, 250,000 deaths or something, you're like every black person in America needs to be taking vitamin D. It was before the vaccine when we were yes. all really scared, you yeah. know, about yeah. what's going on. That's when I started taking it. Yeah, but some of the it. research that I've done in this space, when you start looking back at vitamin D, and the importance of vitamin D in the immune system. Uh, but then when we started thinking about the importance of vitamin D in the immune system, then we look at the role that vitamin D plays in your bone health. Yeah. And, and that's important. I mean, when we start thinking about, about the overarching topic is bone health. So let's go to bone health. Why, Ricky? Is bone health important to you? Because I want to paddleboard till I can't move anymore. Because I want to be able to move my body. Mm -hmm. My mom is um really crippled by COPD. You know, right. she smoked for a lot of years. She stopped smoking when she was fifty, but it was enough to give her COPD pretty bad. And so, um, she really has. You know, she's in a wheelchair now, and she gets around fine for ninety one. I'm not saying it stops her from doing anything, but right. But I, I don't want to have, I want to keep my mobility. I want to be able to do what I want to do. I want to be able to, you know, paddleboard on the water and swim and walk. And, you know, I want to like, I guess I want to go from a standing position to the drop one when you don't make, when you're not here anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Did, did, you, did you, do you have a family history of fractures or osteoporosis? No, but you know, my sister has broken two bones. And my mother um, has arthritis and she, she broke her shoulder, which really was her debilitating injury. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we never really checked for bone health. You know, they just basically said it was arthritis and whatever that made her do that. Who knows? Because, you know, that was a, that was a few years ago before I knew anything really about bone health. And, um, and I think with old people, they kind of just attribute everything to arthritis. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. arthritis, it's arthritis, it's Arthur, whatever. And especially black people, right? Well, then let me ask you a question. So you belong to some a wide variety of uh, women's organizations throughout the nation that are national. Has uh, a black woman's bone health ever been brought up as a topic? No, no. And I didn't hear about bone health until I had cancer, letting her breath that. Um, until I had cancer. Um, and that's when I got a, my first bone scan, my first um, DEXA scan. But I had, I had never heard about it with menopause. I had never heard about it with um, in a physical until I had cancer. And so how, how long a uh, uh, breast cancer survivor are you? I'll be 13 years on September 21st. Okay, that's, so how, that's my favorite Earth, Wind and Fire song, you know. Um, and my doctor gave me two. My doctor gave me two. You know, I um, I had stage three A triple negative, and I had a double mastectomy. I did the you know round you know, the TAC chemo, the standard of care chemo. I did six weeks of radiation. 
They told me I had no evidence of disease. Um, three months later, it came back. I had a scan. It was on my chest wall. And my doctor said, okay, Ricky, you're now metastatic. You have two years to live. Get your affairs in order. And I said, and Haley was a sophomore at Dartmouth at the time. I said, I can't really die right now. I put my kids through school. So what do we got? And so I ended up finding Dr. Ruth O'Regan at Emory. She was a, she was a phenomenal doc. And um, she put me on Carboplatin and Gemstar at the time, which were experimental for TMBC. Mm -hmm. so I took experimental drugs, um, like a clinical trial. And I did a lot more chemo. I didn't die. It's been 12 years. Almost 12 30. years. So that, that's amazing. And I think that the audience needs to take um, take pause for a second and recognize that, that Ricky's disease was an advanced stage disease or cancer, very aggressive. To take, to. And yeah. then her participating in the file at the time not only gave her an opportunity for to see her daughter graduate from college. What's Haley doing right now? I know Haley. I work for Haley right now. Oh, okay. So you now you want to say, now that's messed up. <laughs> He's, that's it. I, you paid for her education and now you work for her. I, said, I work for Haley right that's, now. That's, that's, that's yeah. an interesting concept. So that's what no, you were- she runs, you know, she runs our programs and partnerships and um, she was a teacher for eight years before she, um, you know, came to work with us. And and, you know, I guess she was really my caregiver. She took a term off from Dartmouth and took care of me. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and you know, I guess she's sort of always been supporting me in advocacy. And she said, okay, mom, now you have to pay me for it. So, okay. but, um, but she sure. is, um, has taken it by storm. So when I say, you know, we like to go where black women live, work, play, pray, and slay, that's what mm -hmm. she does. She yeah. takes us into the community and okay. plans all of our events. And, and so we bring, bring everything back. So, so not only do you, because you're a woman and because you're over 40. A little bit. A little, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit over 40. And um, why important? So it, see, see this concept, you, 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 a lot of people think that they um, have to forget everything else once they get cancer or once, um, yeah. And, and they don't worry about the quality of life. And one of the main contributors to an excellent quality of life is your bone health. Yeah. And then, so what is a major exercise that you do that benefits your bone health? Well, I believe walking does. I guess really any weight bearing exercise helps you mm -hmm. with your bone health, right? Um, but I think walking is a great exercise. Why is that? Because, you know, I have a dog, I have Harper. So I walk every day with Harper, but, but, um, you don't have to pay for a gym membership. You, you can do it any time of day or night. You can, you know, depending on where you live, right. Um, you can, um, feel nature. God's all around you in every way. So to me, walking is lately, you can, if you get tired, you can go home. You don't have to like, you know what I mean? Like you get really tired and you're far from me, you can call an Uber or take a bus or whatever, but but you can, you're in control of your exercise. You don't need a trainer and you're in nature. And to me, like that's a great source of vitamin C right now because, you know, walking in the sun, you know, so you get the so, benefit. So to be clear, so now if we talk about bone health, you just tell us about two birds with one stone yeah one you're getting your vitamin d right because you're out in the sun you can see my vitamin d yeah i said black. i didn't know you were that brown so <laughs> knowing the winter time is like Ooh. i'm black and i'm proud i said that's it. so and what do you do to, to what do you do to get all this sun in addition to walking i mean you can't you know what do you do are you out in the sun a lot i'm in the sun you know i live at the beach i'm in the water i'm paddle boarding a lot I paddleboard pretty much every day that I can. Okay, so so now it brings us back to the sun. Yeah. And by the sun, and I do wear sunscreen, but it doesn't have to keep me from getting black. Yeah, but the point is, is the more uh, you're exposed to sun, and then you still supplement with vitamin D, right? Yes. Yes, and I then, do. Has any doctor ever asked you or? 
about your vitamin D level? Or is this ever? I, you know, I brought it up to my, my GP, you know, her name what is Vicky. And um, she, um, and I said to you, I asked her, do you recommend it to people? And I think that she really didn't, didn't recommend it a lot until COVID. And she said she became like a worshiper of vitamin D during COVID because she said so many people had deficiencies. And she basically said, those are the black people who are dying, the ones who have vitamin D deficiency. And so I think she became, you know, more aggressive about recommending it. During mm -hmm. COVID. So you see, so that's, and that was why it was important to, to talk about before the country was shut down. That's why I found it important to talk about yeah. vitamin D for cancer patients, but really for everybody. So why, so now, you get your vitamin D from the sun right. and supplement, okay? And we know that vitamin D is essential for good bone health. Yeah. But do a lot of people know why vitamin D is so important in the whole scheme of things? Because you know well, you, have to, they, you have to have yeah. um, calcium. Yeah, no, but I don't know that. How do we know? How would I know that? You know, how would anybody know that? And when nope. you know, when, when we were getting ready for this show, preparing, I read something that said vitamin D is a hormone. And I said, I got to ask you that. But I don't think, like Keith, you know what? That's why I love what we do here on Black Doctor mm -hmm. Network because we don't know this stuff. How would we know this stuff? No, I don't nobody, know vitamin... nobody would know that when we think about Biden, the only the take home message is this. Vitamin D helps with calcium absorption. And you need calcium. All right. right? So, so take bring that down for me. So, okay. so your bones, your bones are made up of calcium, right? Okay. 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 That's that the take home message. Okay. But if you don't eat ingest foods with calcium, or if you don't supplement with calcium, then your bones are going to get weaker. Okay. Right? And vitamin D is required to help you to absorb calcium from your diet. You know, no. But see, what's interesting is this is another point that a lot of people don't recognize. Did you know 70 to 80% of all Black Americans, if not all Black folks around the globe, yeah. Are lactose intolerant. Yeah, lactose intolerant, and I'm not. Thank you, God, for that because you know how much I love ice cream. But um, but yeah, I know we are lactose intolerant, and um, but, and even even um, you know, like not just milk, but cheese, and like anything related to I mean, anything with milk in it makes people sick. So it's a huge thing. So not only are you not getting vitamin D, but you're not probably not getting all the calcium you should. Is that right? That's exactly what I'm bringing up. And see, the interesting thing is, is this, is that when we were coming up as kids, we were, you know, milk, 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 dairy products, dairy products. But even right now, you like, you have, you sneak off and get a little bit of ice cream in that refrigerator. Yeah. But how much calcium do you ingest a day? Today? Yeah, a day. Uh, oh, a day. Um, well, you know, it takes me like I try to take um three days with a pint of Haagen Dazs or Ben and Jerry's. Mm -hmm. So I don't eat a lot. Like I eat like a third or third or third. Right, that's one of my my limit. But I do eat a lot of cheese. I love cheese, grilled cheese. How many milligrams? Of I don't know. How would how would we know that? I don't weigh that, that stuff. But so but see. I, I eat grilled cheese sandwiches a lot with, um, that's one of my favorite foods. I put cheese in my eggs. I put, I eat mac and cheese. I mean, I do love cheese and I eat a lot. I eat string cheese. So I do eat a lot of cheese. So for this will, this is our love your bone flag moment for the audience. Okay. Calcium. Oh my God, did you hear that? It's the storming big time. Did you hear that? Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it at all. It is storming like crazy here, man. Well, Look at the window. Oh, it is. Yeah. Wow. I had to get away from the door. Yeah. So the uh, the the love your bones moment.
supplement that we want people to remember is, is about calcium. So for women, women 50 years or younger, then it's a thousand milligrams of calcium a day. A thousand, now, I'm upset in the comments. So we need a thousand milligrams, milligrams of calcium, calcium a day. A day. Um, right. And I think you told me I was eating enough dairy products to not need to take calcium. So I don't take calcium. Yeah. And so, because you were, you were getting it from a lot of it, from your cheeses, from yeah. your dairy yeah. products, you were consuming um, a lot of on a daily basis. But a lot of people would only eat ice cream and they weren't, you know, maybe on Sunday. Mm. No, I'm not. So, and a lot, and so peach cobbler, don't remind me. I know you. I just want to throw that in a, the I'm audience. I'll bring it to you in August in, in Martha's Vineyard. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I've been waiting. I'll be like seventy nine. <laughs> it's like that peach cobbler. I wish I had that peach cobbler because I saw I can have some ice cream. All right. But to, but to bring it up, yes, your ingestion, and but you were also doing fortified juices. That's where you can get some of it from your food and some of your um your vegetables also you were able to get it from there but for the audience if you're not ingesting you know calcium or supplementing it into your foods really women under 50 about a thousand milligrams a day and um, women over 50 about 1200 milligrams a day but before we do everything else it will be important for Anytime you have your physical, your annual physical, you should talk to your doctor to get an idea of what your vitamin D measurement, measurements are. And the majority of, of Black Americans or people with um, um, uh, brown, uh, dark complexions, or, or just people in the Northeast are vitamin D deficient. The problem is, is that the incidence of osteoporosis in Black women it's less than the incidence of osteoporosis in white women. Yeah. Doesn't mean that less means black women don't get it. Right. It just means that black women are not at high risk. But when black women experience a fracture, their mortality, their the incidence of death, their quality of life decline very rapidly. Well, it's like breast cancer. Breast cancer, one in eight women, unless you're under 35. We have the same incidence as white women. We just have a 41% higher amount of mortality rate. That's the crazy thing. So, so it's like, even though we're getting it at the same rate and probably even maybe less, osteoporosis even less than white women, the impact is huge when we have it. And um, the numbers for being debil debilitated, right? And then even dying and falling and, you know, fractures are the worst thing. That's what I worry about with my mom every day, when, you know, her falling. Yeah, but so you know what you did though too? I mean, you you were proactive because yes, your mom is had probably has osteoporosis. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know when her last bone scan was, so we don't know that. But what we can do, you know, all the, you know, you know, relatives and, and our parents can be crotchety. And they was like, look, I've lived this long and I haven't. You can always make sure you you be proactive and make sure you make arrange your house so it's less of a tripping hazard. So yeah, you but don't, you, but don't you know what I you know what I find with um um with older people and this really happened to Nate's mom you know um um that if they have some prevalent ailment like my mom has COPD right, right. Nate's mom had um had heart disease she had um um congestive heart failure right so. When they go to the doctor, the doctors are so focused on what their sort of prevalent or much, you know, their sort of major illness is, they ignore other stuff. Like mm -hmm. Nate's mom died of colon cancer, but they, she probably had it for a couple of years, but they kept attributing all of her symptoms to heart disease until mm -hmm. one day I went to the doctor with her and I'm like, she needs to be a skin. She's getting stomach aches like crazy. Something's wrong with her stomach. It's not her heart. But she had probably gone to the doctor maybe five times over six months complaining about stomach pain. And they just tell, kept telling her it was her heart. But they focused on her heart because that was her prevalent disease. And I know when my mom goes to the doctor, I make her, I give her a list because if I don't go with her, because they want to just attribute everything to her COPD. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't want the same thing to happen to her. But I think that the medical community, when you get to be older, they just want to get you out of there. They don't really care. And, and, and so you're gone, you know? Well, see, but look at what, the, this is a very important point that the audience needs to understand. I know that we're kind of bouncing around, but these are important points that are of, of interest and of benefit to um, Black people around the country. It's we can't spend our time um, focusing on um, on the negative that exists and, and be proactive. And that was what's something that, that you did, was being proactive. And there's a mindset that, that we have to have, and that's a growth yeah. mindset. And that growth mindset is a positive mindset. So what Ricky has said is she puts, she's proactive. One, from a healthcare professional is in, the way society's evolved, there's not a lot of time that the doctor has. So the doc may have 15 minutes. Right. right? 15 max, man. Yeah. 15 max. So if you're what going to to your doctor, whether it's you or with a loved one or um, a or, or loved one, organize all the problems. So you should know as a patient yeah. what the problem is, who the doctor is that's associated with that problem, and what medication. So you should have a little table, a little bit of note in your notebook, boom, boom. And when you go to your primary care doctor, okay, I got COPD. Okay, doc. Also, I'm, you know, estrogen levels are low and I'm post, uh, post-menopausal. But what about my bone health? Um, what about my, my sugar? What about my blood pressure? So look at the, what are the things, what about anything related to colon cancer? What, are, what do I need to know? Because what we have to do is we're moving to this era of personalized or precision medicine. Yeah, precision medicine yeah. So we're going to have to be organized with our patient care. Just like you got a car in your glove compartment, there's a manual on how to operate your car. You know, the average person had not really looked at that anyway. But right. for us, we need to be proactive. We can't be pointing the finger and say, well, the doctor didn't. I said, look. The doctor is your consultant. When you go to your consultant, you have all your facts. And this is what I'm worried about. In this case, your mom or you say, doc, I am um, above 40, close to 50. And what about my bone health? You know, menopausal, I'm having hot flashes. Because a lot of people are coming in with the complaints of hot flashes. So that could be a trigger in itself that, you start talking about hot flashes and your changes in your, your estrogen levels. If the changes in your estrogen levels, that's going to impact your, your, your bone health. Right. So that's what people have to talk about. We bring in vitamin D because we brought up, and what the audience to recognize, we brought up some key points. One point is this. You get your vitamin D from your son. That's the original source. But black folks are not out in the sun a lot. And We're not then, out. Um, Two, you get your calcium from your diet. And depending on if you're not out in the sun, you don't have enough, you don't have enough vitamin D to help uh, absorb, to help your body take the calcium out of your diet and put it into your, your bone. So you have to be suffering. So those are the most, those are things that are very important. For, and then the next thing that a lot of people don't hear. So how many people, how many people are going to the doctor and don't really recognize that they're lactose intolerant? If they're lactose intolerant, they're not going to be absorbed with enough calcium. From but I think, I think lactose people know it because they don't feel so good when they eat yeah. ice cream. But they know the relationship between lactose intolerance and the lack of calcium ingestion. But right. you, how do you know when you're not getting enough calcium or vitamin D unless you go to the doctor and get tested, get a blood test. Unless you get your, what's your vitamin yeah. D level? Because they have a test to determine what your vitamin D level is. And then you Can talk- you hear the storm that. behind me? You can't hear it? It's so no. loud. No. All right, well, I made you the co- a co-host in case I lose power because it's pretty bad here. Okay. I know. Is that the hurricane coming up the coast? I don't know what it is. It's my, my Apple weather said all sun today, so- God is in control of the weather, as usual. My water behind me is keeping. 
I know we got we got Barbados on the line here. Joy from Barbados. I hope you're having good weather. I hope you were okay from the hurricane last week. So, so good. Case water is fake, Joy. You can tell that for sure, right? Because you know what the real no, no, is. Joy, Joy. I'm right around the corner. I'm just right <laughs> around the corner. That's, come on down. That sounds like the Caribbean Sea, but anyway, like, come on down. I'm right around the corner. I said, uh, anyway, so, yeah. Well, no. So, how do you know? Like, do you do you have any symptoms you, it, if it, you are it, calcium or vitamin D deficient? The issue is you don't until you fracture. Until you bone, to break a bone. Yeah. And then you're screwed. Yeah. I mean, as you get older, you start to see people start losing inches or they'll, they're, instead of yeah. being vertical, they start to hunch over. But yeah. you, those are signs that, that you don't want to get to. Well, yeah, and that's what that's what people think of osteoporosis. They think it's that little old white lady or that little old white man walking with the cone all bent over. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think what people have in their minds when they think about osteoporosis. It's not, yeah, us, yeah. not us black people that could be standing tall, but my mother definitely shrunk. She was five, six. She's like five, two now. Five, two? Stoned her, but she like lost a lot of inches. Even my, even my stepdad, he was like six, four. And I think he's like six one. Oh, see? And then that goes back to your calcium ingestion. It goes back to vitamin D. Because there, I mean, all of this plays a role. And then in addition to the fact that vitamin D plays a role in boosting your immune system and maintaining optimum function right. in your immune system, which is which is important. So, so, that, so vitamin D plays a role in your immune system in what way? It helps you fight things? Yeah. And it, it, it you know, there's a level of efficiency of the way your immune system, just like your car is tuned while you change your oil, change your filters, you want your car to be tuned up. Same thing, these components like vitamin D are for the body. Your minerals are for the body. I don't see these, your magnesium. All these play an important role. And so, but what the question is, is this, let's recap for a second. So we know that there's a relationship with vitamin D and calcium. We know that. We know something that you're constantly telling the audience, and even even so, those people who are not, um, we want to give a shout out to what's that group that was in Maryland, Bethesda, the uh, uh, Pilates or Maryland Pilates? Oh, the Pilates person, yeah, yeah, that Pilates organization, yeah, I can't yeah. Remember her name, but she has a Pilates studio, a black woman with Pilates studio. She's been on the show a couple times. Mm -hmm. And so, all those neighborhoods, you know, black neighborhoods where, well. You know, there may not be a gym. You might want to take a look at Pilates um, out there. So that's the physical activity. Because the problem is, if you could, we can do a lot of physical activities when, and when the spring rolls around, it may be till late fall. But then what, what happens is when we move into those uh, November after Thanksgiving time frame and, and until for six months, or we may be in the house, no physical activity because it's the cold, because of the weather. And so... Find a, you know, physical activity is going to be extremely important. Weight bearing exercises. And what Ricky had mentioned before was um, walking. That's good. Get a dog. That, like, a, get a dog. <laughs> My own dog. <laughs> yeah. Harper's knocked out. Um, yeah, it's knocked out. And then. Know, but you it, know what? Walking, see, I, I don't believe walking stops with weather. Okay. okay. I mean, I have a dog. She has to go out every day, right? So. I think you just figure out how to make walking work for you because we some of some of us don't like the heat, some of us don't like the cold, and I live in all, all four season climate, but I walk all year. Mm -hmm. I just wear the right clothes. Well, see the problem, not the problem, but the, the issue is no matter what, you gotta take your dog out. I gotta walk. take my there dog people, out. So I would wear my coat. Are, so that, that there are people out there who don't. So even yeah. weight bearing exercises, you can do um floor exercises in your house. Yeah. Right. What is so? What's a weight bearing exercise? Can you explain well, that? I mean, you want to put. So this is something that a lot of people don't recognize. First thing, bones are alive. Just because they're hard doesn't mean that they're not alive. They're alive. They're made up of, of cells, different types of cells. Mm -hmm. They're cells that build the bone up, that break the bone down, and that help deliver um, the the um, a matrix that keeps the bone solid. So bones are alive. And so the more pressure you put on bones, the better they grow. 
they need to have they need pressure. pressure. So they need so that's something you're like putting pressure on. All right. So so what else besides walking would work? Running, which I don't think people are well told. Well, well, I mean, what about riding a bike? Does riding a bike work? I mean, riding, if you're pedaling, you're pushing down. All right. On, what about what about like stairmaster? Same thing, stairmasters, and and that's why I said that sometimes it gets boring, and sometimes all of you know what is just a simple. Let's go back to basics, and that is dancing. Dancing, your favorite Fine dancing. You I see finally, how? I finally got the Tamiya dance. Mm. It took me a long time. Do you have the Tamiya dance? No, uh, but I. And do you know the biker shuffle? That's bad. I can do the biker shuffle. I got. Oh, you can do the biker shuffle. Okay, you yeah, finally learn how to do it. You know, you know how to. Do it. I can do it. And then, um, what's the other one? Um, um, the one here. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, um, I'll look. I'll find the music. You gotta send me the video. Oh, or I think the video, but the Tamiya dance was challenging me, but I got it. But line dancing, so much of us love line dancing. Any kind of dancing is great. That's weight. I mean, that's consistent weight bearing action exercise. And so we all can it, do that, you know. Even if you, every, even if you chair dance, but just mm -hmm. get up and dance. And and you know, we, we I dance every day. Zumba. I mean, how many Zumba, line dancing, right? Bodies. Uh, even in your house, turn on if, you're living, if you if you live in an apartment complex and you have more than one floor, then you have some steps. Right. And you can do steps. Do steps. Don't, don't um, you can you also, do. you know, those resistance bands. Yeah. See, the, the point is, is that I believe that everybody wants to do these things. But I think it shows us like us, like our show that motivates people to do it. It's all right to start simple, just start. Simple. Just walk a block, walk a yeah. block, dance to one song, and then maybe add another song the next day, start slow and, and get a buddy. You know, you can get, you can, if you don't have one in your house, FaceTime with somebody or just get on the phone with somebody and dance to the music, put on speakerphone and boogie it out, you know? And I think it, you, finding a buddy helps. And so find your buddy. And something that I do is now I don't park as close as uh, to the front door of a grocery right, store. Right, 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 right. So first, there's, there's two things here. One, because it's, you know, bone hell. But also, I got tired of people dent my car. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm parking way in the corner. The car, that's it. The that's it. But, um, but, you know, just just taking parking some distance away and just right. walking to, to the front of the store. And that's easy. We can do that every day, right? So, yeah. So, Keith, we have a we have a question from um, Sharon Gregory. Thanks, Sharon. Can you break down the age of each D and calcium amounts people should take for their age? And I'm going to okay. Type. So, you ready? Ready. Go slow. So, I'm typing. so women who are 50 or younger, a thousand milligrams of calcium per day. Women who are 50 and older are 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. And then the vitamin D that is suggested. 50 plus, 50 plus is 1,200? Mm hmm Okay. Now, when we go to vitamin D, the vitamin D suggested, and so we're giving you what the, what the, what's suggested by the, by, um, organizations in the United States. But again, here, let me preface this. And this is, you always need to go to your doctor. We suggest getting, right. um, um, knowing what your vitamin D levels are. And that is the best way that you work with your doctor to determine how much calcium you need to supplement. Okay. Now, what's published is 600 and 800 international units per day. But the problem with that is it's international unit, units consumption is based upon your kilogram, I mean, your pound body weight, how much you weigh. So there is what one should do, but again, we're, we're providing an educational program here. And the best person to be communicating with is your healthcare provider. So I put it out there. It's 28 international units per pound. 28 
international units per pound. So, right. but then we put that over there. But what it is suggested from from the health organizations and bone organizations and and vitamin groups from the United States is 600 to 800 international units. Now for black people, I think that that's low. I think that the numbers were based upon uh, non-black, uh, non people of, of non-African ancestry. But again, we push you, bring you back to your doctor to pay one of your discussions, right? Right, 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 right. So 600 to, to 800 international units a day. Right. But the best way to make sure what your vitamin D levels are, are when you do your next physical, put that on that list of tests that your doctor should perform. Yeah. And so also don't let me sure, put it up there. Sure to ask don't forget, that. don't forget to talk with them about a bone scan too. I know, we haven't forgotten that because you know that always slips through. Right. Oh, you're 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 healthy, you know, you're a black woman, you know, you don't get a lot of hot, you don't get osteoporosis. Oh my goodness. But at okay. least, you know, get a baseline. Doc, can I have a baseline level so I know where we stand? Okay. Okay. So we talked about vitamin D. And calcium. We talked about physical activity. We talked yeah. about nutrition. We talked about hormone. We haven't talked about hormones, but the basics, the, the fundamentals there is as your estrogen level starts to climb, and a flag is when people start complaining of hot flashes, then you know your estrogen levels are starting to climb. Yeah, so, so your estrogen levels are declining in menopause. That's what's happening in menopause. Yes. And so that's when you are become at risk. Yeah. And so what you'll start, well, really, even if it starts at age, at age 30, really, you start to lose bone mass starting at age 30, even though these the, the uh, ladies have normal estrogen levels, but you normally do it. But that decrease, um, when you start to, to have lower levels of estrogen, when you start to become perimenopausal, menopausal, and, um, then that's that flag where you need to start paying closer attention to your bone health and making sure that you at least um, talk with your doctor about when it's time to get a bone scan. Okay, I'm gonna put that in the chat. And then what we didn't say, we didn't also mention is, is this. Um, and then, I, then there's some, I have a couple of questions that people um, have sent me and I, have, I just I jotted them down, but Ricky, what's lifestyle? When we talk about lifestyle, and we don't want, we, we provide people with information and they have to make the decision on how to, what's best for them. Right. But we do know that from the lifestyle, lifestyle perspective, that smoking is a no-no. Smoking is a no-no. We hope that you stop smoking. And there's so many things you can use now. Um, but and I know I'm, it's hard. You know, I, I'm still, I, it's a vaping. I'm still, I'm on the time. I know, so, so talk about that. Talk about vaping. Well, see, here's the deal. When you're young, your body has the ability to recover. Right. From injury. Okay, here's a good example. And people that have had kids or or relatives um, that are young, they'll fall and scrape their leg, and and then three days later they have a scab. Fine. And it's They're fine. They're fine. Now, as you get older, look at what happens. When you get older, you may cut yourself, and it's like, look, this is, this thing's been on my shoulder for like like a week, and it hasn't healed yet. Not healing, right? Yeah, it's not healing as fast. That's, the, that's a good example of what happens when you get older. So in the past, you could smoke, you could go out and drink and drink a lot, and then recuperate, get up, and go to work in the morning. Now it's harder and harder to do these things. So lifestyle changes, smoking, anything that kind of interferes with lung physiology and function. And breathing, and breathing, hello. And breathing, you, you should really try to 
stop the level of inflammation that your lungs or your body is exposed to. And that's why if you know you we that may be a topic of discussion when we talk about inflammation in bone health. But generally speaking, you want to decrease those things that cause a lot of inflammation. Even in your diet, you may supplement that with you know, like ginger and, and turmeric and decreasing your sugar levels and decreasing processed meats. Right. Okay. But the lifestyle we want to flag on is smoking. No, no. Alcohol. Everybody wants to take, have a drink once in a while, even every day. But the issue is it's moderation. So men are suggested to have two drinks a day. That's your maximum a day. It's two suggested. drinks a day for men, okay. And, and ladies, one and a half drinks a day. So I'm gonna let you gauge the size of your wine goblet. But I'm just saying one and a half a day. And then what do we know? One and a half, one and a half for for women. One and a half drinks a day. And don't ask me the question about trying to do a cumulative on the weekend. One day I'm just gonna drink like all five times. Yeah, five and that's times. what people ask me all the time, especially our young women. Mm -hmm. They say, "Well, you know, I don't drink all week, but on Friday, hello, it all comes out." Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And so that's what. And so is that good or bad? Is that it, it's, out? the issue is 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 that it goes back to that one and a half drinks. Because it because so to, to it's make a them make them all you know take using your whole week in one day does not work. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you and then what did you say? Then there's the other aspects of lifestyle. That's the um the walking your dog, the paddle boating, the getting out in the sun are part of your new lifestyle. Going to line dancing, Zumba, uh, what else was it good? The Pilates, going to the the gym, all of those are extremely important. Yeah. So walking, Pilates, line dancing, or just dancing in general. Zumba are all good. Uh oh, did I lose you? Okay. Oh, I lost you for a minute. I I froze. Did I? Did you freeze or did I? No, freeze? no, no. I was just waiting for you to finish that. Okay, I got it. You no, know, my storm yeah. is over. I think. Okay, and then um. So just to to, to kind of recap. There was some, a question here. They, what foods are best sources of calcium? So, and um, and vitamin you know, D. Can you get vitamin D in foods too? Yeah. Okay. So let's do calcium first. Let's do calcium Food first. But calcium. The, yeah, the supplement, the supplementation. But the, I think it's anyway. Our dietary uh, milks, yogurts, cheese are the you know excellent sources then their non-dietary sources include fortified plants right what's a fortified plant I mean, i'm saying fortified with plant-based foods that's what oh I'm like saying. oh like like milk with or i mean orange juice with calcium yeah almond okay okay soy oat milk tofu okay. almonds leafy vegetables you know like kale and broccoli right kale and broccoli okay leafy and then canned fish with bones like sardines and, and salmon. And then now, the next question, the next question was somebody wanted to know what a good dietary source is of vitamin, of vitamin D. And that's uh, fatty fish. So we go back to salmon, salmon. And then mackerel, sardine, are rich in vitamin D. Okay. Salmon. Okay. Fatty Mac fish. What's up, fatty fish? What's up, that? Okay. Sardine. Or rich in vitamin D. Okay, so we got salmon mackerel, you said? Who eats mackerel? How do you eat that? It's a fish. Holy mackerel. We never saw them now. 
We heard it. People use right, it all the time. Salmon, mackerel. And sardines. sardines. I really like sardines. My dad used to kill those sardines in those little cans. The that oh, you wine, got little, the got little key. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. Put them in the same category with chili. Sardine, sardines and like um, Ritz crackers. That was a, and, and some yeah. kind of um, that hog head shoe. That was my dad's snack of yeah. choice. See? So your dad was country like mine because yeah. they all get cheese. I had to go go next door. That doesn't it. look like cheese. What is that stuff? I it doesn't know. taste like cheese. No. It's in. All right. So what tastes good that vitamin D that I want to eat? Cheese, but egg yolk. Egg yolk? Mm -hmm. I think some liver also. If people like liver. But you, I mean, there's a fortified foods like it, you have to look for fortified foods that could be in there. Um, because there's, you know, plant-based sources are just limited. Right. So you see the plant-based. So if, if you are on a plant-based diet, if you committed to that, God bless. Well, then you're looking at sun and supplement. Really? Okay. Okay. And it really supplemented with vitamin D3. And if you can and get that's it. For, is that for vitamin D and calcium? No, this is, we're just talking about vitamin D. Okay. Remember, okay. vitamin D and vitamin D helps your body absorb the calcium that you right, eat. Right, so right. if you don't eat any calcium, then right. But we know that vitamin D C and vitamin D plays a very important role in your immune system and in helping your immune system work. Okay. How but, do plant based people get um calcium? Pardon? How do plant based diets do calcium? The well for we for them to get calcium, we talked about the um, almonds, soy, oat milk, tofu, almonds, the leafy vegetables, the kale and the broccoli. And soy. Right? Leafy vegetables, and you said one more. Uh, well, the um, leafy vegetables, and I talked about the fish and the sardines, right? Yeah. But if you really want to go down in that track, you know, um, we had that cabbage and bok choy. Beans, right? Brussels sprouts, mustard greens for those folks who really like to take mustard green. Um, even shrimp. But again, the issue is, is that how much food do you have to eat to get to the the amount of cows, daily calcium that you need? Right, right. And, and that's why though, right? you know supplementing. It, because supplementing is consistent, but the way it is, the best way to get your food, best way to get your supplements, get your vitamins, your calcium, and your vitamin D is through your diet. And if you move towards a plant based with some salmon, then uh, we're good. Or as a start, but again. Speak with your 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 consultant. That's your your primary your healthcare provider. Let's talk about that again too. And I love what you say about that, Doctor Keith. That your doctor is your consultant. You are paying him to give you advice, but you have to go prepared with information, prepared with the right questions, and and kind and take accountability for your health. You yeah. need to be the CEO of your own health. And as a CEO, you can hire a consultant that can give you advice, but the doctor is not the be all and end all. And I think so many of us, first of all, our doctor could be the emergency room, right? right? A lot of us yeah. go with, like to go to the ER because we don't have a doctor or, when, or, you know, we don't have someone we can go to. So, but just know that, you know, we should, we need to take control of our health. We need to talk about it with our families. We need to know our family histories. And we need to be aware of what we're doing because we are what we eat. We are what we do. We need to move in our bodies and know what's going on with our bodies. Because I think I think the numbers, 80% of women actually find their own breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and, it, it, uh, and when we're thinking about things like osteoporosis and, and vitamin D levels that we don't know, if we don't know those things and they're not obvious to us, we have to ask the doctor for them to get to, to measure yeah. us. I mean, you see what you're saying is it, so important. And that's why we're here. 
Yeah. There's no silly question. There's no stupid question. Yeah. Just ask the question and let us at least pull out the information. If there's a question that someone has, send it to us. We'll look at it and we'll talk about it in the future. Yeah. And so, so that's what's really, really important. Yeah. It, it's important. And that's why we're here. And that's why the service is created. And that's why we have sponsors that want you to understand that we're asking. Now, think about this. This is very important. And there's a, a new trend that they're pushing that the patients share in the decision of their health. But how can you share in the decision of your health if you only have a limited amount of information? Yeah, if you don't know. Well, that's, but that's why, I mean, I hope that what one of the things we can do is sort of bring you the things to think about and be, you know, bring you some questions to ask. But, and if you don't, if you don't, if you need help, you know, you can always email me. I'm putting my email and I'll connect you to Dr. Keith. But, um, we have to take responsibility for this. It's no joke, you know? Um, and um, we all want to be healthy, but you can't be lazy about this stuff. You have to like, you know, I, I know I'm going to do my little be the CEO of your own health in my church every, every third Sunday. And it's like, don't let your dog, don't let your body fire you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because that is so important and we're here to talk about the topics that you're interested in. Yeah, yeah. so tell us what you want to hear and, about. Yeah. We do go off, off, off course a little bit. But that's a little all. bit. Just a little bit. And then there was a... There was you get so question. excited about stuff. That's all. Yeah. There was one question. Um, how does my age or menopause status affect dietary needs for bone? Just to recap, mm. it said... Um, so as you get older, your body's ability to absorb calcium decreases. And then when your body's ability to absorb calcium decreases, then bone loss accelerates. And this is due to hormonal change. Right, okay. Right? So the key thing here is increasing your calcium ingestion and increasing your uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D help you absorb your calcium. Right. But if you don't have any calcium, if you're you not ingesting that amount of calcium, right. it's not going to help. So the two go hand in hand. You need both. All right. I think that says it all, my friend. Mm -hmm. And then if, if there are any questions or anything that people need about this topic, Send in some, send in, put it in the chat. Yeah, put it in the oh. chat. Email me. I put my email in the chat. And we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about it. Because why? And this is something that's very important. Once you start eating healthy, once you start exercising, then you start to live longer. Now, you don't want to live longer, and then now you've got a broken leg. And then the other thing, too, there's, there's a lot of single parents out there yeah. who are juggling work, Kids, jobs, kids, jobs. jobs. I mean, it, it's it, if you break a bone, who's going to take care of you? That's the thing. If you don't do these things, you will be need to be taken care of. And who has time for that? So I, I, I put our last comment in as, can you see it? Dance. Dance, dance. Wasn't there a song? Dance, dance, dance. dance. Yeah, let's dance. So... You know, we were going to go for a walk today. Remember we had talked about maybe going Yeah, you started. I was ready. I had my I phone I ready. The storm had stopped, but it's still raining out there. But maybe next month we'll go for a walk. Yeah. But you know what? Everybody everybody who's watching. You can go for a walk now. And get your 10,000 steps in. Because I'm getting my, this is my month. I'm telling everybody. All right. This is my month. I get 10,000 steps in every day. All so right. I'm on target. This is the All 14th. Right. So... I have 140,000 steps in this month. That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't, you know, I don't count my steps. I but, do. <laughs> but but I, I do, I do three, my three miles, pretty much three miles a day. And so, so. Get, your, get your steps in, get your Go miles. For a walk. 
go for a walk, go get some, go get a nice big salad for dinner today. Don't and, forget the sunscreen for some, some of you folks need some sunscreen. Yep. And, and I think they trying to say that everyone needs a little bit of sunscreen, but just, yeah. you know, but get your walk in, get your exercise in, get your, your, your weight bearing exercise in. Yep. And we'll right? see you next month. We'll see you next month. We'll next probably month. do the first Sunday, the first Sunday of August. We didn't do the first Sunday of July because of Fourth of July, but we'll, we'll be back first Sunday of August and check our websites, you know, um, what's your website? Spell it out. Um, Prostate Health Education Network is the name of, of, of my website. That org. Um, or you can just remember RAP, R-A-P, cancer.org. Yep. So wrap and it with yep. that stick, beat it down. Beat it down. And RAP, touch cancer .org. That org. You got my email, call us, email us, whatever. Mm -hmm. We're here for you. We, we'll be back first week of August. And we have lots of stuff planned this summer. If you're going to Martha's Vineyard, we'll be there on the 13th. Actually, we'll be there all week doing VEX scanning and and um, look out for what we're doing. And then join us on Wednesdays for The Doctor Is In. And I love you, Dr. Keith. Hey, I love you, Ricky. Bless you, love. Take care, okay. everyone. I've been Thanks working on this, though. Is that better? That's better, but you're blocking your face. Oh, oh, I, oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> Take care. All right. I try. <laughs> working on it. Maybe working next time. All right. Take it easy. Go for a walk. See you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Black Doctor. Thanks, Amgen.